Hey, welcome back to Soda Time Restoration. This is part four on the Vendo 39. I'm gonna to try to stay, uh, complete the rest of the teardown on the cabinet. We're gonna be doing the drum first, uh, be taking the lining off the front, uh, pulling the compressor out, and uh, taking the liner out. Bear with me here, I'm gonna grab a few tools and we're gonna, we're gonna start on this drum. The drum has uh, one mechanism in the uh, shaft in the front. You'll see the pull-out uh, stopper. That's so you can turn the drum. And uh, then your rotation is in there. On the final video, as I'm putting this back together, I'll show you how, uh, if you don't know how to load one, I'll show you how to, to do that. There's a clip. Just a half moon clip that comes off the front. And once you get halfway out of there, it'll pop off. A little half moon clip. Take your washers off. Make sure you hang on to this stuff. Uh, don't want to lose that. I, I would bag that. Uh, drum parts. Um, we're ready to take this drum out, literally that easy. You'll pull this uh, release button, which releases the cage. And uh, there is a set of forks back here in the back that come through the back side. I usually turn it and the forks will fold up. And the drum is out. These are the forks I'm talking about. Uh, so as, as soon as you push that up, those forks get out of the way and the drum comes right out. Usually something I always look at on the drum, you'll see it's got, had some areas where it's been bent up. Those, those can be straightened. Uh, I usually take these apart, uh, paint the, the back side, and I try to buff out this front face last one i did come out really really good but uh i got a new product we're going to demo on that uh on this round so uh drum pieces out so we're going to go on and we're going to go to probably going to take compressor out next i know on this compressor it's locked up so this one i will be sending off and getting it done you'll have a cover plate on the front Take it off first. And it just slides up and pops right off. This particular piece here, uh, some people do chrome. I polish this one out. This is another one I'll be showing uh, a new product that I'm, I've just uh, started using. And uh, we'll show how that one buffs out. This top piece comes off the compressor. There'll be two screws holding the, the evaporator. If you're thinking about redoing uh, your compressor, if everything's getting cold, just remember the top motor as soon as you plug it in, uh, it'll be running all the time. This particular machine, don't see too many of them. It does have a, a button on it. So when the door is shut, uh, it turns it back on. When the button comes out, it shuts this upper fan motor off. Probably a safety deal to keep people from reaching in there and getting their fingers in there. But uh, this one here basically will run all the time. Uh, definitely. Uh, replace this motor and you'll have another fan motor on the on the back one this particular one does not it's just got the regular condenser on it and it cools just by the air this piece here is loose now it's going to be ready to come out of there we're going to take this uh, bottom trim piece off next bottom trim piece uh, 
Some people try to save them. Uh, this particular one, uh, I'm going to say, I'm going to put a new one on. And off she comes. There'll be uh, some on the bottom. And there's, I think, one, two, definitely two, if not three. And if, if it gets the point, and one reason I'm doing this video, this is a piece that's going to get replaced. If you're trying to save it, I get it. But this one here is, could be re chrome, but you can get brand new ones for about the same money. I can bend that down just a little bit. We can get into that screw. And basically, we're tearing those out. Now those screws will be a lot easier to get a hold of. Uh, this will definitely be... Uh, something you want to put on your list that you will need for replacement. You can get them in a basket weave or you can get them in a chrome uh, flat face. Looks very nice with the chrome one, I think, but everybody's got their opinion. All right. So next step is a compressor. Uh, it's got should have just these two up front. Looks like a 7 sixteenths. A rusty 7 sixteenths. Probably wouldn't have hurt to spray a little penetrant on these. Uh, once again, I'd be... I'm going to be putting new ones, new bolts in these anyway, but it never hurts to get them a little bit loosened up a little bit. I use a product called Aerocrow, a uh, good product for this. Probably two steps a little stronger than your WD-40. get into a situation where it's spinning on you that's there's and this is what this one's doing right now if you can hold it just a little bit uh, she's out I'm not saying they come out that easy all the time <laughs> but you get lucky get lucky every once in a while this compressor here Probably when I get it back, it will probably have a lower fan motor. At least that's been uh, what we've been doing. Some of them. I kind of like that. Make it cool a lot better. Work a lot better. All right. So both bolts are out. Like I said, we'll replace those. In order to get it out, it's kind of in a hinged area. So I always lift up and you'll find that the top piece of this is going to be uh, leaning against the machine back there. So get it as loose as you can. Sometimes pull it forward if you can. Let's see if we can give it a little movement. Let's we'll see if that little tapping will help. Be honest with you, probably one of the toughest 39 <laughs> pressers I've ever pulled. <laughs> but that's the way it goes. There's one side of it. If you can get it up out, out of the hole there, like so, you'll see that little edge piece coming up. Work your other side. It's 
trying to be difficult. There we go. Sometimes you gotta get a little rough with it. So release that from the top. Um, you're gonna have uh, two wires coming to this switch. I usually just cut them. Um, you can go ahead and take that piece off, I guess. We'll, we'll keep it all connected so we'll remember how it goes back in there because we will be rewiring all this. There we go. So, first time you've done it, probably best to uh, leave it all attached. That way, when you get ready to go back together, take you some good pictures so you can see what's going on. But as you, as you see, we just got a push button switch. And when it's in the out position, it, it kills the, the power going to the motor. Uh, you can replace this switch. I could not tell you if this one was working or not because I the cord was so bad on this. Um, the compressor, the lower compressor would not kick on at all. So you'll lean it back as you're coming out. Have this one ready, and then this will lean out. And then these tubes are. A little bit pliable. Looks like I got one more piece I got to take off there. I see a miss. All right. So we'll be sending this compressor off. We'll get some pictures of it before we send it. Try one of the original jars. Kind of nice to have that one. It fits in there nice. Now I'll give you an inspection of what you're looking at as far as when you're buying one of these Vendo 39s, something that could be a problem. What you'll see is if somebody's done the maintenance on them, is always critical. And on this one here, I can tell you right now, the drain tube on these is right there underneath this the evaporator and as you can see there's a good old pile of dirt i'm gonna say this thing's probably in its years did not get clean uh i see one hole here and i think that's the one typically uh, there's always one screw that holds the compressor down. I bet you that's it. Really, I'm surprised it's not worse. You can punch, punch a hole through it. This one here, probably going to be a keeper. Once you have this sandblasting, you're going to see if it's good to uh, be able to uh, powder coat. I usually try to fix these. Uh, bases. Uh, you may have to go back in with new sheet metal uh, to put a new base in it. But yeah, you got to have this good. That'll drain tube. Uh, if you own a Vendo 39, if you can get a, a, a long something to, to run up in there and just keep that tube from plugging up, uh, this won't happen to you. You won't be rusting this area underneath here out because what happens? It flows over, it goes down a hole here, it rusts out the bottom. But uh, overall, not too bad. We'll get reset back up here and we're gonna start taking the cabinet apart. This stuff here, you can leave on, you can leave that on. I usually do not take them off. Um, if, I do, if I do take it to the powder coat shop, I'll, I'll take it off at that point in time. But for right now, just for tear down reasons, You'll have a little chrome strip here in the middle. It's a separator strip for the in between these two. Uh, yes, if this thing is really rough, which believe it or not, 
This one here is probably one of the better ones I've seen. That'll polish up nice. But if yours looks really tough, you can get brand new ones of that. Uh, decals, you're going to have two here. Do not push the basket uh, wire while turning. Obviously, they want you to keep that wire out so it keeps catching it so the drum doesn't spin on you. And then you got one down here. Check your level for your water in your jar down there. Uh, other than that, uh, decal wise, I think you're pretty good. There is a, a serial number on this one, and it was an F39B5K. Um, obviously, 39 was the model. I'll have to look up that uh, B5 on. I should know that. I've done enough of these. I should know what those last ending numbers mean. You're going to have a set of screws down here. We're going to get them out. Typically, they don't come out very good either. Especially in this one here, being uh, some water in it. Always put new ones back in these. They're just so rusty. Once again, you'll have another chrome strip. This one looks good. If you remember when we took the door apart uh, for a Vendo 39, probably one of the better tear down 39s I've ever seen. Uh, just the insulation was like still very, very good. Once again, the chrome, the strip, breaker strip in between. I always get everybody asking me on these clips. Um, you'll see a little uh, weather stripping that they used here. And uh, I see where somebody has punched a couple of holes through here. This one may be getting a brand, brand new uh, facing on it due to that. I probably could fix that, but no more than they are. Uh, you do have to take the, this uh, latch assembly out where the lock hook hits. Those will come out. And when you pull it out, you will see, remember this, that's the only washers that should be on it when you go back together. Keep those just like that. You're going to see two more. And I'm so important that you do this one because you can get this cabinet all the way back together and you're going to miss this one. You're going to see two little washers. They're about so thick, uh, but there are a spacing between the cabinet and the liner. If you don't put those in and you try to put this back in on top of that, it will cause that to fold in a little bit. Yes, in my early days, had no idea what it, what those were for. So now I remember, I glue those in. And when we get it apart here, I'll show you again. But when you get that thing apart like that, you several months down the road or maybe a half a year down the road, all of a sudden you remember, like, how did that go back together? Since I'm probably going to be buying brand new uh, outside uh, fascia on this one. Uh, I usually take, there's little clips on here, and if somebody out there has has mastered these, hey, leave me a comment. I typically will get these loose and slide them down like this, like so. And they're, they're clipped over the edge. I'm not a big fan of them. I don't think it holds the moisture that good. So when we go back together, you're going to see that I don't use them. I've got, they can be used if you want something factory, factory finish. I think I've got something if not definitely better because these are spaced out so far apart 
air can still get back there. And I just like my system better. These clips are sometimes a pain to deal with, but they'll come out. And there'll be somebody, I'm sure, comment saying, oh, they're the best thing ever. I get it. I'm just uh, never been a fan of them. All right, so the top clips are gone. If you get to the point where you're in this area here, um, you can, I think, you know, I'm not for sure on this. I think you can buy new of these clips. I've seen a lot of people uh, push it out like so. So you can get past it. And sometimes they'll snap off on you. So get all the clips off there. And especially if you're saving this, usually you don't see a couple holes. Somebody's messed around with this one, tried to try break into it or something. If you can get them pushed back just enough. Uh, All right, I think we got all the clips off. And you'll see it kind of be glued in there and boom, they're out. And as you can see, where they punch through this, don't see that too much. Usually I can save these. I bet, I bet I've only, since 93, I bet I bought a couple sets of these on a Vendo 39, that's it. <clears throat> and the outside liner is off we'll be making a note on that to be purchasing new ones so um one other thing to save um these little back these keep that that black the black facial we just took off these keep it pushed out and keep it really tight so definitely save these don't send it to your powder coater and have them sandblast it and lose it you're going to see a set down here in the bottom and these are actually in pretty good shape most of this machine has been pretty nice pretty nice so you'll have a handful of those once again bag those with the the tank assembly stuff a couple more up here see on this all right we are ready get you uh probably a 7 16th and i guess good if you're taking notes when you take these out, you're going to have a, I don't call them felt washers. They're kind of like a, almost like a ceramic or hard plastic uh, washer that uh, butts up to this. And you'll see these here. I'll, I'll get them off here where you can see them. I would bag all this stuff separately. And for the sake of time, I would like to show that, but right now I'm kind of putting everything loosely on the top of the machine as I go, just so we don't have a, a three-hour teardown. So you're going to see a, a washer like this. Basically, it goes up against the cabinet, gives it a nice flat surface. Uh, I've taken some of these apart and just the nut there. Um, it just it just holds a lot better. And it does have a lock washer on these, so they won't back off. And to be honest with you, I don't think I've ever seen one back off. 
So those four are out. Remember to save all four of those. And uh, typically underneath, you've got a drain tube underneath there. <laughs> and as, as contaminated and blocked up it, it looks, it doesn't look too bad, but uh, I always put a new one in. I've, even when they look really good, just just for just to be for sure that we've got it. There is one bracket that holds that down tube. I usually try to get it loose and try to get the tube out of there. So that's what we're going to do next. This one's actually in there pretty good. Most of the time when they've been sitting in water like that, they're usually done. So I'm gonna lay this machine down so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so drain tube comes through the, the inner cabinet, passes through the, the next liner, and man, I'll tell you what, unbelievable. Look at that bottom liner. Looks just like a, I'm not gonna say brand new, but it is a miracle how good it looks. So there's two screws down there. Get both of them out. That will make life a lot easier. Having an extension on a Phillips is nice. Okay. So, you'll see this whole piece housing. You'll see kind of, kind of a black putty. Uh, take that off. Usually you can take a screwdriver and... Uh, I'm not trying to save this but it will help in getting the tube out of there. Yeah, it looks like it's already loose. This putty helps this. You don't want that tube to ever turn. So the lockdown plate that they give you on here, definitely be bolting that back in just like, like they had it at the factory. There's a reason for it. If somebody ever gets inside and dumps that thing, you will have leaks down there. You want that thing solid. Okay, so I usually start working it back and forth. Mm. We, we just found our, our hole issue. And probably a good thing we did what we did to find our issues here. Right where that pile of mud was at right where that drain tube goes through at uh as you see it just fell right through so at the point in time we probably will be putting a new uh, bottom plate in this one so so right now uh with that hanging out the bottom uh we're ready to pull the tank out Here, let me back this up a little bit so you can get the full picture and here we go Pull the top first, you'll see that uh, you're released from the two top ones now. We've got just the bottom ones we're going to do, and this thing should slide right out. And then once you get that, you're going to basically pull that out. Uh, you can grab the shaft right here, and we're out. So cabinet's out. You see our big hole in the bottom. And that will have to be fixed. Now, remember those two pieces I was, I was telling you about that were behind the lock mechanism? You can tell they have a little bit of glue right here. Boom. There's one and the other one has dropped through. If you start going back together and you can't remember 
which one goes where. The thicker one is the one that goes behind this lock plate. The thinner ones, they went on the outside out here. You will see one, two, three, four. There should have been five, uh, excuse me, six. So you should have these four, five, six. And when we pulled that other tank out, uh, I thought maybe it might be stuck on there, but it's not. So, and I know it was there because in the video we just did, they were in there. So we'll be very cautious when we're taking the insulation out. But as of right now, it looks like uh, we're going to be short one, but it's here somewhere. So, so keep, oh, I just found it. So typically it's going to fall down and boom so there's number six so you should have six of those when you take that tank out put a mask on put your set of gloves on it'll be probably typically you can do uh there's a back piece out of the back your top piece like i said very very nice machine Really too bad somebody did not take care of that drain tube on there. Most of the time, I'm scooping this stuff out with a shovel. And usually the base one is the worst. But if you get to a point where it comes out in pieces, uh, get you a flat shovel and take it out with a shovel. If you're allergic to this stuff, you definitely probably want to use the longer gloves so it doesn't get in there and itch you to, to, to death. Some people I know use a mask. And I would strongly suggest it. Really, the only thing we got left here's that tube, the way it come out of there. And yes, that should have should have come out of there a lot better than that. <laughs> uh, that's just too bad. Everything else on this thing is really, really pristine. Uh, probably, if you're going to have this glass beaded. Um, on, the, on this cabinet, if you're gonna have it stripped all the way down, which I am, um, there is a face plate on here. I would definitely take this face plate off. It's the only thing left. And I'm gonna show you one other spot here. I showed you the other night where they did a date code. I'm gonna give you another date code here. Over the years, I kind of find the spots on these, but like the 59. No, excuse me, 51. There's the 51. I see, uh, looks like on the 12th date, uh, 1951. 1949, I think, was the first production machine. This is very early machine. I'll get that uh, serial number looked up and see where that hits at, but basically, uh, that is a complete teardown of a Vendo 39. Remember, as you're going to write everything down to get your parts ordered, what you're going to have to re redo. If you've got chrome hinges on the side, like this one, these will buff out very nice. Or take them to, or, ha or send them to the chrome shop and get them re-chrome because they look really good re-chrome. Um, we're going to try to buff those out and just see how, how nice they'll look. Uh, I want to try to keep you connected with this machine. We're going to the powder coater tomorrow uh, on some of the other stuff. This is going to the glass bead uh, and have this blasted all the way down to bare steel. Uh, I strongly suggest doing every machine that way. But thanks for staying with us and uh, probably... Uh, the next steps, I will probably have everything hopefully back uh, after getting these blasted. 
and we'll start doing a little bit of body work on these and uh, probably that uh, lower uh, metal piece on the cabinet uh, will show a little bit of work on that. So the compressors uh, we'll be sending off. I may do a small video uh, on just what we've done there uh, before we send it off. But uh, thanks for uh, watching us. Keep us in tune. We'll uh, let you know what this Bendo 39 looks like. Thanks again.